there's so much that we can learn from the world of sports and take into our lives. So Tim, I know you speak about in your book, um, In the Zone with South Africa Sports Heroes, you talk about work ethic and I know you mentioned the intentionality. Yes, so absolutely. I think it's, it's absolutely fundamental. The reason why is that there's lots of bumps on the way to the top. In fact, the higher you want to go, the more failure you're going to have to go through. And so mm. for a lot of people, they stop at a certain level of failure. It's just too hard. They're too devastated. It's too upsetting. It's too. It's just too damn hard. And so by having the big reason, every time you get life knocks you in the teeth and teaches you uncomfortable lessons, which is going to happen if you're trying to be your best, uh, they'll teach. Life will teach you the lessons you need to learn to be your best. Mm-hmm. And so when that happens, it's to have the context of the reason why I'm having this crisis in my life or this challenge or being dropped or being injured or being fired or being bankrupt or being divorced or being whatever. There's a part of this reason that I can take with me that will get me to the top. And am I going to do it? Or do I have to wait for this reason to come back even stronger the next time? So the lessons will come back again and again. Once you set yourself a big intention, the lessons will find you that will help you grow into that intention. And if you ignore them, they'll come back stronger and stronger and stronger. Either to either you face them or you give up your intention. That's normally there's some sort of interesting relationship there that I, I'm sure it's quite hard to put down on paper, but it's been my experience in my life and the experience that I've had with other athletes and, and high performers is that there's so many lessons that you need to learn. Don't wait till the fourth or fifth time to learn it. Otherwise, it's a lot harder then. So, so yeah, learning the fast, or but also then your big why, your big reason gives you the motivation to to get up and test yourself off and and, mm-hmm. and face the next challenge and, and hopefully take the learnings from it. So, so it's the success that you create from uncovering what happened when things went wrong. So you, you interviewed about 17 of our top, top sports heroes. Is there any you know, example of what you're talking about now? So for me, there's, there's several examples, but the one that really sticks out in my mind was in around 2005, 2006, I interviewed Natalie Dutoy. And I'd seen her in the press and I'd read some things and I heard she was an unbelievable motivational speaker. And I was really intrigued because obviously her story of being an amputee, uh, you know, really just captured my imagination. And when I, when I interviewed her and I, and I started hearing her story where she was saying she always had a dream of being an Olympian. And swimming was a way to become an Olympian. And, and, and in terms of that stage of her career, in the beginning part, she was a sprinter. So 50, 100 meter sprinter, very quick in the water, worked really hard. And as a youngster, was one of the best in the world. In fact, as a 14 year old, she went to the Commonwealth Games, you know, as a sprinter in the pool, which is pretty impressive at any level anywhere in the world. And so sure. she was on target to get her Olympic dream. Uh, and that was in 1996, she was at, or ni- ni- in the late 90s at Kuala Lumpur at Commonwealth Games. Unfortunately, the next year as a 15 year old, she was in an accident in Cape Town where she was coming home from training and a car skidded and hit her on the leg and it was so badly mangled, the doctor said, listen, we're going to have to amputate. If you keep oh. it, you won't have function, but there's, either way, your sports career is over, it's done. And uh, she tells a story of how her folks, really incredibly strong parents and her spoke about this and faced the rally, what's what, and decided to, as a family and her in particular, how do I want to deal with this thing? And so she decided, hang on, thank you, Mr. Doctor. I respect that you've got an opinion, but it's not the opinion that's right for me. I believe I can still do something here. Three months after losing her leg, she was back in the pool, which is almost unheard of for an amputation. It's just, it's crazy talk. And she started training and training and training. She trained so hard, she got the nickname of the machine because I'd never seen anything like it. And she worked so hard that she got herself to a place by the Manchester Games that she was able to compete in the 800 meter final as an able-bodied athlete or disabled-bodied athlete in able-bodied field. So she was one of the top eight wow. athletes in the Commonwealth in that short space of time of training really hard. So from one Commonwealth Games to the other, she achieved that level. In fact, they were so surprised by her and her character and her spirit that they created a new award for her, the David Dixon Award. To say, look, we don't know, we don't know what to say, but it's amazing. You've got something that's amazing. And so, are you saying then that what really drove her was having that such a strong that she wanted to be an Olympian? Who's used to say Let's just see. because you've got a medical degree and you know some things that you know about my ability to achieve my dreams. I say not, was what she said. Yeah. I choose not to believe that you know what's in my heart or what's possible for me. Wow. And thank you very much for all your care and help, but I choose not to take that on. So she believed she could still be an Olympian. She could still do it. She missed out in Sydney because that was really close to her accident. She missed out in Athens by fractions of a second. She still wasn't fast enough, even though now she's a 1,500-meter swimmer. So imagine Usain Bolt or Insane Bolt going into middle distance. That kind of changed in the pool. You don't get sprinters becoming middle to long distance swimmers. It doesn't happen very often. She did it with one and a half legs. Still missed out by wow. fractions of a second. So I'd met her. We're 15 years of her life. She was going for one dream, and she had failed repeatedly in the most spectacular ways. 
missing out by fractions of a second. And I said to Natalie, I don't mean to sound like a prick or anything, but what happens if you don't make your dream? What happens if you don't do it? And she looked me square in the eye and very matter-of-factly said, yeah, there's a chance that I won't. But then she looked at me again, and I could see the passion in her eyes and the energy in the room change, and I'm getting my hair standing up in my <laughs> arms well. as I remember now. And she says, but there's a chance that I will. There's a chance that I will. I, I believe I can do that. And I don't want to be someone who gives up on dreams just because other people don't believe in them. I'd rather have a dream and fail it than not have a dream at all. Wow. So I'm going to go for this with everything that I got. And so very shortly thereafter, they changed the regulations for the Olympics, introduced a new swimming event, the open water swim. And about a year after I spoke to her, she qualified in Spain. She came, I think, sixth out of that race, and she qualified for the Olympics. And she was our flag bearer in Beijing and created an absolute sensation around the world about who is this courageous young woman, how amazing is she, and look at what she's done. She and is. she just did so much And just in that so story, there's, there's so many learnings from that. And as you're saying, just from sports in general, that we can take into our day-to-day -day life just for us to, to mm -hmm. really not give up on our dreams of whatever that, that dream holiday or the dream family life or whatever it is we want. So, yes, if you want to hear more from what Tim and Jody have to say about the world of sports, then you can hear our full show at ltp.letstalknetwork.tv. Thanks, guys. We'll speak to you more later. Thank you so much. Yeah, Cheers. it's a pleasure.